we don't have a media. We have propaganda outlets for the intelligence community. And they've been kind of given their marching orders on who's allowed in the discourse and who's allowed to be propped up and who's allowed to get away with things that they got away with. And then all of Epstein's associates, they're fine. Nobody got damaged. How many people's lot reputations were sullied? I, I would give an example of compare what's been done to somebody like Peter Bremelo or Jared Taylor, who I obviously don't agree with a lot of their stuff, but you have to add those qualifiers, unfortunately. But compare them to people who piled around with Epstein. Or the Sackler family. And how the They're media, still billionaire. Yeah, the they Sackler killed family. killed all those people. Yeah, and they escaped criminal charges. Or Boeing, which just did a civil fine for all the people they killed because of their cover-ups and their crimes. What, what they get away with. So if you're, if you're in, in a world where you say something offensive, maybe unintentionally, you're, you're done, at least in terms of how they can't define the discourse in the way they once did, but you're sullied forever. You have a scarlet letter on you forever and you have to learn to accept that and overcome it. But you're, you're, there's a ceiling on you for sure. And, but you can be a friend with Epstein because the media and the intelligence communities are all working together. So they'll make sure that your life isn't made too difficult for what you did. Are we ever going to know more? Do you think about Epstein? No, about 20 years. I mean, th there's that book chaos, which was about MK ultra on the Charles yeah. Manson. So in 50 years when nobody can be damaged and nothing can really be done, we'll learn about the, we'll learn about the truth of it. Maybe, but there, there's a great conspiracy theory, which is the government or, or rather there's a meme about conspiracy theories, which they dismiss it as a conspiracy, conspiracy theory 20 years ago. Then they admit it, but now they tell you whatever you're accusing them of today is a conspiracy theory and it keeps getting pushed forward. Last question. Mm -hmm. Do you, you know the effect of all of this? The evaporation of like recognizable reality has made everyone super paranoid. And um, I have noticed probably too paranoid because it's not helpful to be that paranoid. But um, do you think that the U.S. government is working aggressively to spread disinformation within opposition media? Do you think there are like lots of feds running around actually? Oh, I, I think there are all kinds of feds embedded within the right wing movement, right wing movement and the conservative movement. You think that's real? Oh yeah. To discredit people. That was the CIA. They, there was a book called Intel pro. You can read the CIA manual on how you disrupt movements, which I read and what they would do. The CIA would do at the time they're doing it to the black Panthers, but now they're doing it to anybody who's deemed Christian or goes to a Catholic church is they have various tactics. And one tactic they do is they call it stone. Um, what do you call it when you keep talking? Filibustering. So you will you have a group and you'll have two different agents put in. One is going to try to fed trap you like they did in Michigan. Oh, we need to do more than just talk. We've talked for too long. It's time to take action. And then that only works on the really desperate people who don't have anything going on which happened post 9-11 to Muslim kids, if we're being fully honest here. This isn't a new thing happening to us, and woe was us. It was happening to Muslims, and a lot of conservatives didn't really care. Oh, they, That's true. The FBI stopped another terrorist attack. No, they didn't. They found some poor Muslim kid who was lonely, maybe mildly autistic, and they planned a whole thing for him. Or he had non-mainstream opinions, yeah. but wasn't hurting anyone. By right. the way, you're allowed to have non-mainstream opinions. In fact, that's the whole point of this country, is allowing right. you to have non-mainstream opinions. Right. So now it's our right. turn in the barrel. So on the one hand, they'll try to do that with low-hanging fruit. On the other hand, they'll have people who filibuster and make it so that nothing can really get done. Right. The, so the, the more elegant way to disrupt a political movement isn't to fed trap people, it's to run out the clock. So I think, for example, Q, the Q thing, trust the plan, I believe that was intelligence operation done. The reason I think that is because if you go back to 2018, the entire narrative being spread to MAGA world was there's going to be a massive red wave in 2018. We are going to overtake Congress and Trump is going to accomplish all of these things. And millions of people, maybe tens of millions of people believed it, well, what happened? What happens when you believe that everything is going to be okay and it's being worked on? Well, you don't push. You don't press your guys. You don't register voters. You don't turn out to vote. You don't do all that boring grinding. 
because in your mind, trust the plan. It's all being taken care of. It might look like President Trump is getting rolled by the deep state, but he's really not. This is a feint. And what really is going to happen is all these mass arrests are going to happen. So I believe I have no direct evidence of this, but my personal belief, and I think it's a rational one based on the very manuals that the FBI and CIA wrote was, I believe that the entire QAnon movement was made by the intelligence community. And so Epstein gets charged with the lowest possible conic that he ever could have been charged with. And all, all their properties were left unattended. So mop-up teams went in there, took whatever they needed to take out there. And then Epstein commits suicide. It's the end of the story. What's to talk about? All gone now. All in a nice... It's like the, the ending of The Usual Suspects. It's like he never existed. What happened to all the evidence? The, I mean, the intelligence apparatuses have it. So, we, but we read that you know there are hundreds, of thousands of hours of videotape from mm -hmm. his various properties. Of yeah, that's a fact. That's not a. Yeah, that's not something that was in. So, where is all that tape? Do you know? Vaults, vaults in Washington D.C. or Fort Knox, wherever Bill Barr had it sent. Yeah, whatever physical location Bill Barr and whatever uh, Five Eyes agencies he was working with stored it. They have all that black military on people to this day. And they'll, they'll release it if they need to, but everybody's kind of playing ball. You find out that Bill Gates was there often. Where are the videos? Where's the proof? You'll never see that. But Bill Gates will go along with the agenda. Bill Clinton, he'll go along with the agenda. Reed Hoffman, he's a very vicious person going after people. And the media gives him a pass, even though he was with Epstein. I love, here's what I love about cancel culture, why you know it's not, not sincere. I would support the universal enforcement of cancel culture rules. So if the rule was you did a bad thing in your life and you're kind of beyond the norm, beyond the pale, and you're not allowed acceptable society, if that were universally applied, that would mean Bill Gates is, is not anywhere, right? Bill Clinton would be canceled. Bill Clinton, I mean, there's all this, I, all this witness testimony about Bill Clinton. Uh, Reed Hoffman would be canceled. But it's interesting that if you post a bad tweet or a bad video clip out of context or chopped up or even a deep fake or even somebody makes it up, now you're you're toxic. You're toxic waste. But everybody gets to hang around Epstein and they can still speak of the DNC and they're, they're held up as the media and propped up. So clearly the media was in on the Epstein stuff because otherwise you would hound Bill Gates to his dying days. Bill Gates would never get on stage without you asking about Jeffrey Epstein. And we know for a fact that Reed Hoffman, who is a totally poisonous person, uh, he was a close associate of Epstein's. The Wall Street Journal reported on emails where the Reed Hoffman was trying to introduce people into Epstein's world. And Reed Hoffman's story is, of course, well, I was trying to raise money for MIT. You know, he's got his own narrative. But yeah, this has all been reported and authenticated by the Wall Street Journal. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. We hope you'll subscribe to it. And by the way, you can hit the little bell on there and get notifications every time we produce a video. We hope you'll do that also.